Hi, I'm Sarah. Before I dive into my story, please remember to like and subscribe for more. It's crazy how life can flip upside down in an instant. Let me take you back to where it all began. I was rummaging through the attic, looking for an old photo album. That's when I found it. A stack of letters addressed to John, but not my address. My heart pounded as I tore one open. It was a love letter, but not for me. Another woman's name, another life. I sat there, stunned, unable to move. Later that evening, John came home. He was his usual self, kissing me on the cheek, asking about dinner. The normalcy of it all felt like a slap. I couldn't hold it in. John, what's this? I thrust the letter at him. His face paled, eyes darting around, looking for an out. It's nothing, Sarah. Just junk mail. You know how it is. But I wasn't having it. Junk mail? This is a love letter, John. And it's not for me. What's going on? He grabbed the letter, crumpling it in his hand. It's nothing, Sarah. Just forget about it. But I couldn't forget. I watched him, a man I thought I knew, turn into a stranger before my eyes. That night, I couldn't sleep. My mind raced with questions. Who was this woman? How long had this been going on? The next day, while John was at work, I started digging. I found a hidden folder in his desk. Bank statements, credit card bills, all pointing to a life I knew nothing about. There were expenses for two households, purchases I never saw, and trips I never took. My hands shook as the reality sunk in. I needed more proof. I hired a private investigator. It felt like something out of a TV show, not my life. The investigator was a no-nonsense woman named Linda. Sarah, we'll find out everything. You deserve the truth, Linda assured me. It didn't take long. Linda came back with photos. John with another woman, a child, their child. My world shattered in that moment. I had to confront him. That evening, I waited for John in the living room, the photos spread out on the coffee table. He walked in and stopped dead in his tracks. Sarah, what is this? This? This is the life you've been hiding from me. Who is she, John? And the child? He sank into the couch, burying his face in his hands. I'm sorry, Sarah. I never wanted you to find out like this. Like this? How long, John? How long have you been living this double life? He wouldn't look at me. Five years, he mumbled. Five years, my voice broke. And you thought you'd just keep this a secret forever? I don't know, Sarah. I just... I don't know. I stood up. My mind made up. I'm seeing a lawyer, John. I can't do this anymore. You've been lying to me, to us for years. I need to think about my future. Our children's future. He tried to touch my arm, but I pulled away. Please, Sarah, we can work this out. No, John, there's no we anymore. You made sure of that. As I lay in bed that night, my mind was racing. I wasn't just a betrayed wife. I was a woman wronged, a mother fighting for her family. I knew the road ahead would be tough, but I was ready. This was just the beginning. The morning I walked into the lawyer's office, my hands were shaking. It felt like stepping into a new chapter, one where I wasn't just the betrayed wife, but a fighter. Miss Thompson, I'm David, your attorney. Tell me everything, he said, his voice steady and reassuring. I poured out the story, showed him the photos, the financial records, everything. David listened intently, his expression growing graver with every detail. Sarah, this is a strong case. We'll file for divorce and sue for emotional and financial damages. You've been through a lot, and the law is on your side. I nodded, feeling a mix of relief and anxiety. This was really happening. David worked swiftly. The divorce papers were served to John, along with the lawsuit. I braced myself for his reaction, and it came. John tried to turn the tables. He spread rumors, tried to paint me as the unstable one, the reason for our failing marriage. It hurt hearing those lies, but I had truth on my side. The court day arrived. I sat there, feeling like the whole world was watching. John was there, looking nothing like the man I married. His lawyer was slick, trying to weave a story where John was the victim. But David was brilliant. He laid out the evidence, clear and irrefutable. The photos, the financial records, they all told the story of a man living a double life, deceiving his family. Your Honor, the evidence speaks for itself. My client has been living in a lie, her trust broken, her life upended by Mr. Smith's deceit. John's lawyer tried to counter. Mrs. Smith's claims are exaggerated. 
This is a simple case of a marriage falling apart. My client is not the villain she's portraying him to be. David shot back. A marriage falling apart doesn't justify a secret family, Your Honor. The emotional trauma and financial strain on my client are profound. I watched, my heart pounding as the judge looked over the evidence, her expression unreadable. Then, she spoke. Based on the evidence presented, it's clear that Mr. Smith has not only been unfaithful, but has also caused significant emotional and financial harm to Mrs. Smith. The court rules in favor of the plaintiff. It was over. I had won. But as I walked out of the courtroom, it didn't feel like a victory. It felt like the end of a long, painful chapter. I drove home in silence, the events of the day replaying in my mind. I had stood up for myself, fought against the lies and deceit, and came out on the other side. But at what cost? The house felt empty when I got back. The kids were with my sister, a temporary arrangement until things settled down. I sat in the living room, the silence deafening. Then my phone buzzed. It was a text from David. Congratulations, Sarah. You were strong and brave. This is a new beginning. A new beginning. The words echoed in my mind. Yes, this was an end, but also a start. A start of something new. Something better. I had fought for myself. For my children. It wasn't just about winning in court. It was about reclaiming my life. I stood up, feeling a newfound strength. This battle was over, but my journey was just beginning. There was a future ahead. A future I would build on my own terms. And for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful. The courtroom victory was more than a legal win. It was a turning point. I became the talk of the town, my story resonating with so many. Women reached out, sharing their similar experiences. I wasn't alone in this battle. A few weeks later, I received a call that would change everything. A filmmaker, Kate, wanted to meet. Your story is powerful, Sarah. It needs to be heard, she said over the phone. We met at a local cafe, her enthusiasm infectious. I want to make a documentary. Your story is the centerpiece, but it's bigger than that. It's about women who've been deceived, their resilience, their victories. I was hesitant at first. Reliving everything on camera wasn't appealing, but Kate's vision, her passion for women's rights, it struck a chord. I'll do it, I finally said. The documentary, Shattered Trust, took us months. Kate interviewed other women, each story a different shade of betrayal, but with a common thread of strength and resilience. The filming was intense, emotionally draining, but also healing. As the documentary took shape, so did my new role. I became a voice for women who had been silenced, an advocate for their rights. The local community center reached out, inviting me to speak at events. I found a new purpose, a new strength in empowering others. Shattered Trust premiered to a packed audience. The response was overwhelming. Tears, applause, women sharing their stories afterward. The documentary had touched a nerve, started conversations that were long overdue. The settlement and full custody of my kids felt like justice, but this, this was something else. It was impact. The documentary started making rounds in film festivals, gaining more attention. Women's rights groups reached out, seeking collaboration. My life had taken an unexpected turn, from a wife, a betrayed partner, to a public figure, an advocate. I was invited to panels, interviews, women's empowerment workshops. My story, once a source of pain, was now a beacon of hope. The children adjusted to our new life. They missed John, but they understood, in their own way, why things had changed. We became a tighter unit, just the three of us, facing the world together. I often reflected on my journey, the pain, the betrayal, and then the empowerment. I had transformed, not just survived, but thrived. The documentary was a testament to that. It wasn't just my victory. It was a victory for all women who had faced similar deceit. One evening, after a speaking event, a woman approached me. Her eyes were teary as she grasped my hand. Sarah, your story. It gave me the courage to leave my abusive husband. You saved me. Her words hit me hard. This was why I was doing all this. Not for fame or recognition, but to make a difference. To empower. The documentary continued to make waves. Schools, colleges, even corporations started screening it for awareness. The impact was tangible. Real. I became more than Sarah. The woman who sued her husband. I became Sarah. The advocate. The voice of many. 
But with public life came challenges. Scrutiny, criticism, the constant juggle between advocacy and personal life. Yet, every time I felt overwhelmed, I remembered that woman's words, the difference I was making. The kids saw it too. They were proud, telling their friends about their mom, the advocate, the woman in the documentary. We had our tough days, but we had each other, and we had a purpose. As the documentary gained national attention, so did the issue. Discussions about women's rights, about deceit in relationships, were happening at higher levels. Laws were questioned, policies discussed. Shattered Trust wasn't just a film, it was a catalyst. Looking back, I couldn't believe how far I'd come. From the ashes of my broken marriage, I had risen, stronger and more determined. I was no longer just Sarah. I was a symbol of resilience, a voice for the voiceless. My journey wasn't easy, but it was necessary. It was a journey of transformation, of empowerment. And as I stood there, at another screening, watching the faces in the audience, I knew it was all worth it. This was just the beginning. The fight for justice, for rights, it was far from over. But I was ready, ready to face whatever came next. As the dust settled from the trial and the whirlwind of the documentary's success, I found myself in a new chapter of life, one filled with hope and renewed purpose. I had emerged from the shadow of deceit and betrayal, not just unscathed, but stronger, more resilient. Life after the trial was a stark contrast for John and me. While I was thriving, finding my footing as an advocate and a voice for women's rights, John grappled with the consequences of his actions. His social standing had crumbled. Friends and colleagues distanced themselves. The financial ruin from the lawsuit and the loss of his family seemed to weigh heavily on him. I heard through mutual acquaintances that he was struggling, both emotionally and financially. A part of me felt a pang of sorrow for him. But it was overshadowed by the sense of justice and closure I felt. One day he actually had the nerve to message me. He wanted me to forgive and forget. But of course it was far too late for that. I replied with just one word. Impossible. Meanwhile, I was flourishing. The settlement had granted me financial stability. But more than that, the documentary's success opened new avenues. I was invited to speak at events, participate in panel discussions, and write articles. My story had struck a chord, and I was determined to use this platform to effect real change. One of the most significant steps I took was establishing a foundation. Named New Beginnings, it was dedicated to supporting women who found themselves in situations like mine, betrayed, deceived, yet strong and resilient. The foundation provided legal aid, counseling, and support groups. It was my way of giving back, of turning my pain into a purpose. The work was fulfilling, sometimes overwhelmingly so. But every time I saw a woman find her voice, stand up for herself, and rebuild her life, it reminded me why I was doing this. The foundation became a beacon of hope, a place where shattered lives were pieced back together. My personal life underwent a transformation as well. The trial and the documentary had made me a public figure, but at home, I was simply Sarah, a mother, a friend, a woman rediscovering her own strengths and passions. I found solace in simple pleasures, reading, gardening, spending quality time with my kids. We had grown closer, the ordeal having forged an unbreakable bond between us. They were my biggest supporters, my source of joy. As for my love life, I was cautious. The scars of betrayal ran deep, but I hadn't closed my heart. I dated, nothing serious, but it was nice to feel wanted, appreciated for who I was. I wasn't in a rush. I had learned to love myself first, to find happiness within before seeking it in someone else. In this new chapter, I also rediscovered old friendships and forged new ones. People admired my courage, my resilience. I found a community of strong, independent women, and together, we uplifted each other. We shared stories, laughed, and sometimes cried. It was healing, empowering. As I look back on the journey, from the painful discovery of John's deceit to the victorious end of the trial and the success of the documentary, I realize how far I've come. I had not only survived, I had thrived. I had turned my darkest hour into my greatest strength. Sitting at my desk, looking out the window, I feel a sense of peace. The sun is setting, casting a warm glow over the city. 
My life, once overshadowed by betrayal, is now filled with light, hope, and endless possibilities. I turn back to my work, planning a workshop for the Foundation. There's so much to do, so many lives to touch and inspire. The journey hasn't been easy, but it's been worth it. Every tear, every moment of doubt, every step, it's led me here, to a place of empowerment and purpose. The future looks bright, not just for me, but for all the women I hope to help through my foundation. We are survivors, warriors, and we have new beginnings waiting for us. The story doesn't end here. In many ways, it's just beginning. A new chapter filled with hope, strength, and endless possibilities. Did Sarah's decision to not reconcile with John, even after his apologies, and to move forward with the lawsuit and documentary, represent a stronger form of justice and closure? Or do you believe there was room for forgiveness and reconciliation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more engaging content. Remember, your interaction helps shape our community and the stories we share.